Well, I'm very pleased to welcome Robert Bathurst to the Luck on Sunday studio for the first time. I hope it's not the last. I did read in an interview the other day that Robert said that his, his greatest failing in life was to say, yes, I'd be delighted to. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that's not the reason en, en route to Germany for more filming this afternoon that yeah. you agreed to come here this morning. Well, I'm delighted to be here. Well, that's, thank, you so, <laughs> thank you so much. And of course, you're not just here as one of the country's most recognisable actors. You're here because of your great love of, of the sport and of horse mm. racing. I was reading an article in The Guardian the other day and you said, if there was one smell you loved, it was horse, and the reek and stench of horse should be bottled up and, and sold. Why, why do you love the, the well, animals? Well, from a very early age, my, my, um, my uncle and aunt were, uh, had hunters in North Cotswolds, and we used to, I'm not from a horsey family, but I used to love going down there. I used to love hanging around the stables. I love the smell of horses. I love the smell of, of tack and, and all the, stables, the stable reek that goes on. And 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 the, and the, you know big sweaty horses after after a bit of work. It's 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 a it's a, it's a great atmosphere. So you weren't a rider, as such? No, I'm not. I'm not. I mean, it's, uh, no. I mean, uh, I'm I'm not a rider. The last um, I did do. Uh, luckily, I have stunt people to do my riding <laughs> sequences for me. And uh, uh, but so no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't ever say I am. I wouldn't. Um, I did. I fell off last time. I mean, I, I'm, I don't bounce anymore. I just like being around them, and I and I, I love the sight of them. I love the. Uh, the, uh, the whole spirit of the game um, and the question of sports generally. I mean, I like uh, you know, seeing seeing polo and eventing and things like that as well. But um, jump racing is, is what I adore most. I mean, you know, you know, fear of a different kind. You know, sort of exposing <laughs> your your soul and exposing yourself to, to huge audiences. Um, how much do you admire the the, the fearlessness of, of jump jockeys in particular? I remember reading about Terry Biddlecombe back in the day, talking about the red light and talking about when, as soon as a jockey sees the red light, that's how he described it, when you're going into a jump and, and, and if it's not green, something's wrong. You know, you, you have to, you have to, have, it's not fear, it's not, it's not reckless. I mean, it can be reckless mm. and it can be close your eyes and go. But, but um, as soon as, as soon as I understand and talking to jockeys, I love talking to jockeys <laughs> and, and whenever I can, and just to, just to, to get them to somehow to express what, 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 in what spirit they're going at the jump at that speed. And I just think that I, I just in awe of, of, of their bravery, of course. But it isn't just, re it isn't reckless, it's such skill, it's such timing, it's such rhythm. And um, as soon as that rhythm is interrupted by fear, then I gather it's time to give up. And two other things that you, you could empathise with are the adrenaline, Getting, being on a great adrenaline high mm. and then having to manage yourself after, mm. Mm. after that. Uh, adrenaline high mm, mm. and also life in life in the spotlight yeah I mean sometimes when you when uh, the first night of a show <laughs> when you're about to go out on stage for the first time you think I mean who needs to do bungee jumping <laughs> you get that sense of, of, of free fall um, and but uh, yeah I mean you it's, it's absolutely I mean it's much safer being an actor than it is being a jump jockey I have to say uh, but there, there, there are elements of, 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 of fear and terror and all those other things like that, which is nowhere near anything like taking beaches. Uh, but that, that life in the spotlight, and I think now, especially with sportsmen they, and women, they, they, they spend more time in the spotlight than perhaps they used to because they're not shielded it from, from anywhere. To what, to what extent did that inform your desire to be, to be part of the, the fall, the new, the new film that you're making with Nathan Horrocks? Well, I've had an interest in racing for a long time and somebody knew that and got in touch um, with, with me about that. Uh, the, the Fall is um, a project, Nathan Horrocks, the, the former jockey who runs um, a production company, um, in the light of um, very uh, difficult things that have gone on in racing in, in terms of mental health. And people, friends of his uh, who have um, succumbed. Um, he wrote a script called The Fall, a short film, and he rang me up to talk about being the trainer in it. The trainer is just a, I just phone in and, and sack the jockey. You know? so, and so he was talking about that. And I was talking to him about that. And I'd read the script. And, I, and I was, I, I, it's a subject that I, I am well aware of following, following the game. And I'm also fascinated as to, what, as to what the pressures are in particular to racing as opposed to any other sport. Mm. So I was talking to him about that. And, and I said, have you ever directed actors before? Because there the, are the two parts in it. There's the jockey and his partner. And, uh, and he said he hadn't. And so uh, through my agent, I didn't say it directly. I said, well, I'll do it. I'll direct it. I'll direct the actors because, um, and it's not, I said, I'm not, it's, it's a collaboration. He, he does really high, high grade documentary films, uh, uh, pro, uh, yeah. TV programs, programs for uh, called Equine Productions is his company. But he hasn't, he hasn't done drama before. And if you're going to tackle something as pertinent as mental health and racing, um, 
I wouldn't have wanted it to be uh, just a, just a self-help video. It's got to be a drama first. And so you, and we've got these two really, we've got uh, Daniel Thrace and Chloe Wade playing, playing the two, two of the actors in it. And uh, I said, I'll direct them. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be with them. I'll tickle the drama along, as it were. And then the, the power of it, the power of what Nathan's created, uh, can also um, have a reflection as to what the, the pressures are on, on, um, on jockeys you know, and, and how they might possibly avoid succumbing to it. Do you, do you think you would get as, as big a thrill out of directing young actors as you would from performing yourself? It's a different thing. I just, I just, um, it's all behind the eyes, and you just, you just, you just want to, we want to just get, bring them it, into it. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know how it's going to go. We don't know. It's a, it's a, re it's a really good story. It's got to be like a little symphony. It's a short 10, 10, 12 minute film, and it's got everything's got to be. It's got to be done with great economy. Uh, and and there's, there's the tensions and all those points like that have got to be, got to be made and created and marked. Um, I'm really looking forward to, to working with Nathan on, in, in, um, in bringing it off. And I, I'm speaking to Nathan a little bit a, a few weeks ago, who was saying that, you know, as I was touching on, jockeys can't really escape the, the attention now. There's no, there's no real safe place for them. They just have to be out there and on their game all the time, whether mm. they're on the horse or off the horse. Mm. And that wasn't the mm. case. You know, in Terry Biddlecombe's day, he could go off and enjoy himself in the in the evening yeah yeah and, and, and no doubt did a huge pressure and, and I, I was just I'm intrigued as to why 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 racing is different from tennis golf other sports and this is it's just the, the team around you you are so exposed yeah. as a jockey you of course you're in the in the weighing room with with people who are out to get you but uh, but but of course the cam I love the, I, the stories of camaraderie within the weighing room the support you get but it's not it's not it's not unqualified mm. and and who have you got you've got trainers who you've got to keep the ride from you've got owners who are who are having a go at you you've got now got social media and all the pressures that come from there who who do you have and i think the the loneliness and the exposure that jockeys have is 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 something that is different from other other even individual sports where there is more of a team around that that performer I, I, I was reading your, your article that you wrote in the, in the oldie where it was a, a really a love letter to, to steeplechasing. Mm. You love jump racing in, mm. in, in particular. But you also noted that the racing industry, both coasts, but especially the jumps, is insecure and feels the need to widen its, its public mm. appeal, which I thought was a, a pretty astute observation from someone who's not immersed in the game every day. You really do pick up our, our complete neurosis and insecurity about, about our, our sport. I think you should have more confidence in, in the product. Um, I, I mean, I, interesting. You had your um, Patrick at this early, earlier uh, aware that um, people aren't being brought in towards the sport. Fans mm. uh, aren't aren't don't dip into the sport because they feel that there's too much of it or, or, mm. or whatever. Um, I, I, there, there are all sorts of discussions to be done, and, and I'm not uh, qualified to, uh, to to give answers. But uh, I, I, I think. I, 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 do, I do love it, but I do think that the, the racing game could, should just say, we have this most fantastic product. It is so exciting. It is so vivid. It is so full of stories. It is, it is, it is brilliant. It is a great day to come, come to. You can stand up by the jumps if you can, if you're allowed into the middle. And you can stand there and feel the power of it. And you can, see, and, and you can get to know individuals from remotely from, from, and horses. And you can, in the jump game, you can follow, as it's been made so many times, to follow the horses through. Uh, it is a great, great product, and I just, I just sometimes think that that that, that uh, racing is too is too down on itself, and uh, they should say we have this this great, great sport. Um, the, the problem is that it's, it's it has the business model is, is 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 betting, and not everybody is drawn to betting, and there has to be a way of monetizing the fans of of racing who who don't want to bet too too hard, and I don't know how you do that. But um, it, it is, I think racing should be more confident about what, what, what they're doing and, uh, and, 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 and accept the fact that they're doing an extraordinary, dangerous, exciting, thrilling sport. One of the horses that really got your blood pumping, I know, was Moscow Flyer in mm. that vintage era of two mile chasers in mm. the sort of early noughties with Azerty Op and, and Well Chief. What was it about him that you, you admired so much? Uh, I mean, he, he wasn't unflawed. You know, he, he, mm. he was. Uh, it was at a time when I was really getting into the sport. I mean, I was I was I was following it, following you, following following um, Alistair Down in the in the post, following uh, all the races. But he 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 had four falls. I don't think uh, Bagheerity had much chance with any of the uh, <laughs> other falls. And and he came back. He came back. He ran his two uh, champion chases, having had his failure um, in the middle. Mm. And it was it was um, really exciting to see. 
um, a, a horse, you're on the, on the edge of your seat as to whether he's going to make it round. Uh, and, and, and he, and he w wiped the opposition. I also love the fact that it was Jessica Harrington tr training. I just was, I found her really appealing. Um, and so it was, it was a horse you've, to, over a three year period, you could follow Moscow Flower and get the most tremendous thrill. And this must have been around the sort of back end of the first Cold Feet incarnation, mm. and your co-star, Jimmy Nesbitt, a mm. massive racing fan as mm. well. Did, mm. did you quite often talk racing together? Yeah, I mean, his time with Riverside Theatre was, was mm. extraordinary. Um, spoiled him, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you talk about beginner's luck. <laughs> talk about beginner's luck. I mean, you know, and he, but, I mean he doesn't claim uh, that the, um, the success is being entirely his own. He does uh, praise, uh, to this day, uh, mm. Garrett is right, Barry Garrett is right on, on, on Riverside Theatre. No, that, that was extraordinary. I did also, at a time, in Cold Feet, we had a, uh, they, were, they sort of paid lip service to our opinion. And I did say, wouldn't it be great if, if um, David had a horse? And so we did have a sequence where, where I bought, bought um, Karen a, a horse and we raced it at Chester at a real meeting. Uh, and uh, so there was a sort of a racing strand in there which we managed to get in. Uh, but yes, we do. And, and, and Jimmy's success with Riverside Theatre was, was magnificent and, and, and uh, wonderful, to, wonderful to, 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 to witness. Was, was having, being able to have an input in those storylines, did that, did that make the whole experience a lot more enjoyable than, than otherwise? Well, we, we, don't have that much in, we didn't have that much input. I mean, literally, they, they, um, uh, they said, what, what do you think at the beginning of each series? <laughs> <laughs> we said what we thought. Something might dribble through, but mostly, no, we just wait till the page, just wait, till, wait till it's all written. I did enjoy the idea that you got them to give you a Harley Davidson when David turned 40, though. That, 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 that was that, something they, they, they said to me. They, they were, we had... Um, they did say, say that. No, that might be disputed by the, by the production, but I remember saying that I thought it'd be good to ride a motorbike, partly because <laughs> I wanted to get my test, and, uh, and, uh, and Granada paid for my test. But on the other hand, uh, I did uh, fall <laughs> off the bike on camera <laughs> and smash the Harley. Uh, so so they, uh, that, didn't, uh, didn't, uh, that wasn't a story that continued. But this is perfect for the haplessness of the character, exactly, surely. Exactly, quite, exactly. Uh, the director said it was the happiest day of his life uh, to see me wobble past the camera and <laughs> I pressed the wrong brake and went over and and uh, he, at, the, at the end of the shoot, Simon Delaney, he gave me a, a little piece of the smashed indicator lamp on a plinth as a... As a, as a yeah. <laughs> you, you say that you, you, found it, you find it very difficult to say, sort of say no to people and, and turn, turn things down, but you don't strike me as someone who's sort of naturally at ease with you know, the bright lights and saying, yes, look at me, here I am, and another day. Yeah, well, I mean, we can go into that, but it's, uh, it's, it's not about you, in, in one sense, in the, the acting. It's, I mean, if you're a comedian, you're more exposed, you're, it's, about, it's about you, it's about your, 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 your life, your creation, but you're not, as, a, as, a, as an actor. And it's not, um, it's, it's not, everything, all, all art has to be embodied now, whether you're doing poetry or writing or uh, even commenting on art. You, you, you have to sort of talk about what it means to you rather than just, uh, just the, uh, the, the ideas, the dispassionate detachment from it. So my job really is to, is to look at the page and see if you can, you can make it breathe. So you wouldn't be a Stanislavski or whatever. <laughs> well, all those acting techniques, it's all about focus. It's all about how you concentrate. It's all about how you, how you ignore the fact that there are so many people around you. Uh, you, just, you just focus on it. And, and if, if you want to do method, you want to do Stanislavski, you want to do anything, it's just about your process. And, and you've just got to make it, make it look as though you're, you're, um, you're, you're, you're it and uh, that you, people have different ways of, 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 of creating that. And one of the reasons why I asked you that was because you played Jeffrey Bernard in mm. Jeffrey Bernard is un unwelled, the revival mm. in the pub that they were trying to save because yes. he'd, it, it had been his, mm. his, his boozer. Uh, what sort of experience was that? Is that where you really have to embody this extraordinary character for whom um, boozing and gambling and mm. whatnot really was just his, his slow, gradual destruction? Yeah, I mean, it, it, uh, what, was, what I loved about uh, the, the Jeffrey Bernard thing, I mean, a lot of, he was uh, harsh. You didn't want to meet him at three o'clock in the afternoon. But what, it was a celebration of his, of his writing. It was a celebration of Geoffrey Bernard before 11 in the morning, mm. when he was the master at the, key, at the, at the typewriter. He, for 15 years, he did low life about his life in Soho, as we know. As we in, know. in The Spectator. In The Spectator. Mm. And so then I took him on. Um, I was asked to do it in the, in the pub in which it was, as you said, the coach and horses in Soho. Um, there's a possibility we might revive it, actually, coming over really? to, uh, in time. And, uh, yeah, we had se crammed 70 people into the pub. 
uh, three flaps. I was in, on, I had a table out in the middle. Uh, people were this close. To, uh, people, it was so hot, people kept collapsing. So I had to, a couple of times I had to take people out onto the street <laughs> and revive them, <laughs> stop the show and then carry on again. Um, but, uh, and it wasn't the first time that people had been taken out of the coach and horse's feet first. <laughs> I bet it wasn't. Yeah. Did you, it sounds like you, had a, you really enjoyed that job. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, you are completely into it and I love working close. And, uh, and, and, and being plausibly close, that's, mm. that's the job, is to be plausible in whatever you do and not let yourself shine through, push, push through and not let your take on it, your agenda, um, get in the way of, of, of the writing. And so um, uh, with Bernard, yeah, absolutely. I, um, and you had uh, Norman Ballon and Richard Ingram sitting there, and, you know, <laughs> absolutely that up close. It was a feat of concentration as much as anything else. And all the other parts were played through a, through a, a, a speaks of uh, disembodied voices. Is it? Originally, when Peter O'Toole did it in the West End, he had four other actors. Ned Sherin mm. got four other actors to do the scenes from his life, the cat racing, mm. the time when, 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 when winter had, had frozen out all, all racing and there was nothing to bet on. They were desperate, sitting in the coach, <laughs> yearning for a horse to lose their money on. And, <laughs> and, so, uh, and so, he, uh, so they did cat racing in a, in a flat in Battersea. So, yeah, I created that. I had the audience pulling the cats and... and uh, and, and so interacted with the audience a lot, but uh, you didn't need the other four actors in it, and um, and so yeah, I do. And all the Mr. and Mrs. Backbone of England when he moved to Lambeth, uh, he was very disparaging <laughs> about them. So you do all the voices and you, you create it. And yet we had the screens up when he was done by the CID, well, the, by, done by the police for running a book in the coach. Uh, and it was great to be able to say I was arrested here, and I, I was arrested, and he was actually arrested <laughs> on that spot, two yards away. And it was uh, so it was it was really exciting to do it in situ. See, I, I, I think a lot of people watching will, will find the whole idea of the degenerate gambler from a bygone era still quite, quite seedily glamorous or glamorously seedy. I don't know which way around it is. But now we're sort of entering a, a sort of new era of mm. being a bit more puritanical mm. and racing wants to sort of detach itself from betting. It's quite it's an interesting balance. We've, got, we've all got a strike as a, as a sport. Absolutely, think, yeah. And, and uh, you're not celebrating uh, the, the right to self-determination. I mean, he was, I mean, he, he had diabetes. He's, he ended up with no legs because he wasn't taking his insulin. Uh, he was being wheeled out of the Groucho by uh, pop singers taken off to his flat in Berwick Street. Mm. He, was, he was on a path of self-destruction. You're not celebrating that. You're just, you're just reflecting that that was his life. Accept it. He was a gambler. He, he, had, a, he, had, a, he had a gambling problem. Uh, but he was also a brilliant writer. He wrote for The Sporting Life from the position, from the perspective of a loser. Mm. And that was, his, that was his great shtick in, 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 in writing for, um, for, the, for The Sporting Life. Um, uh, yeah, he was, he was a drinker. He was vile. I mean, yeah, anyone, I, I know people who, who, who work with him and, work, uh, and, and encountered him. And yeah, you, it's, but you're not, you're not celebrating that. You're just reflecting it. And you're reflecting the mind of the person who, 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 who his ability to, to, to write. I, I, just from reading everything, it's, it, it strikes me that you, you, are, um, you are attracted to, to people or to parts or to... Uh, the horses, in the case of Mo Moscow Flyer, who, who aren't mm. perfect, who, who sort of reflect the fact that life isn't always a you know, smooth, um, you know, untrammeled path wow. to great success and wealth yeah. and riches. Well, that's why I love the racing game, is, is that it just takes an, an attitude to risk, which is very unfashionable. <laughs> and it, and it, is just, it is just accepting that chance plays the upper hand in absolutely everything we do. And, 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 and it, it accepts that. And, it, and, it, and failure, as I adore about the ra about a racing game, is if you're going to be champion, it's, 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 it, you have to reckon on losing 80% of the time. And I can't think of another sport where you have to be a, a face defeat quite so, quite so regularly. Tell that to me, uh, Alex Ferguson, say you, you're going to lose 80% of your, your matches. Yeah. Uh, no, the, these people in there, they, have, they, they are utterly realistic about, about chance and about life. And Sir A.P. McCoy, you know, after he'd been champion jockey 20 times and won over 4,000 races, I described himself as the losing most jockey in, in yeah. history, which is, well, the kind, I mean, he's unusual because he presents this sort of in the most bleak and stark way I, possible. I, but. I love A.P.'s analysis of what it's like to cross the finishing line. He said he crosses the finishing line, it's yes, like that, within a few seconds he's on to the next one. Mm. He's, not, he's not resting on his laurels like that in, in, his, in, his, in his day. And, and uh, you, you always... Yeah, utterly, utterly realistic about yeah. It's it's going to the, be the next one, and, and and you've got to aim for the next one, having had the the, the rush of the, the great success. There is something incredibly repetitious about uh, about being a jockey as well. I know that, I know each rider is a bit different, but there is something there is something of the relentlessness about it, particularly in the summer when they're riding ten horses a day. Mm -hmm. You could go on stage for a run of 
60, 70, 80, 90, even more nights. And if you, if you were in a West End musical, you'd be going on for, for 10 years. Yeah. Uh, how hard is it to keep, to keep focused in that sort of environment? I always think of two numbers before I go on stage, um, uh, 30 and 20. Um, I, I, on, on, on the, you can't assume that anyone's just going to be listening just because you're talking. You walk on, you can't assume that the audience are going to be there with you. So, so I reckon on any given night <laughs> in the theatre, 30% of the audience aren't entirely sure they want to be there that night. Yeah, they, they, they're, they're, babys- on they, they're, they're on sufferance. They've been brought, it's a corporate night, they've got babysitting problems. They, they're thinking, oh God, do we really have to go through this? So you've got to, you've got to take, on, take on that lot. 20%, 30 and 20, 20% of the audience might at any one time be asleep. So, so you've just, you, you go out and get them first. And, and you, you don't, it's not, you write off the previous show. You might have done one that afternoon, but it's irrelevant. Mm. Uh, you, you get them. They, these are the ones, they pay 40 quid, uh, give it to them. So similarly with jockeys, but again, uh, you know, jockeys, <laughs> the, the variables are, uh, are, are great. And, and, and what might go right or wrong are huge. And so it's not, uh, the relentlessness is in the traveling, I suspect, and, uh, and some of the routine. Uh, and maybe the relentless grinding disappointments that, that you might be facing with the odd golden moment. But uh, no, I don't think the analogy between acting and, and uh, racing can be, can, I think that can be overplayed, I think. Yeah, well, they're, well, they're, they're <laughs> very different for sure, but I think it possibly gives you some, gives you some empathy anyway, that element of, element of fear and also a certain amount of monotony. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. And, um, but uh, you know, the, 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 the racing game has its, has its pressures and, and its particular um, thing. And, and uh, at least with, with, unless you're in a one-man show, at least you've got the other actors around you to, 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 for, for, for support. Um, uh, at the end of the day, uh, if you are going through a bad streak, I think uh, it's a very lonely place to be a, a jockey. Now, you're off, to, you're off to Germany after this to, to, yeah. to continue filming. Just tell me about the current project. It was a Robert Harris book called Munich in 1938. It's about the... Um, and Netflix are doing a, a version of, 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 the, of, the, of Robert Harris's book about the Munich Agreement with Chamberlain and Hitler. Um, and so, yeah, we're f- filming that at the moment, and it's great that, that there is filming happening. More and more productions are now getting going within the, in the current situation, and they're finding a way. I have a Q-tip stuck up my nose every day, and, uh, and we just go on set and, and, and do it. Because the, it, if the, the arts in particular looked as if it was going to be the, one of the most significant sufferers in the... In, in, in the sort of rescue packages that were were, yeah. were given out by the government, absolutely, and 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 actors bizarrely um, haven't been um, uh, declared as as key workers. <laughs> Who <laughs> strange that, isn't it? Who that's strange, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So no, there's a lot of freelance uh, actors um, uh, actors who haven't. Uh, yeah, exactly. Is uh, the, the, everything's gone? So um, uh, in theatre, live performance. Although there are, I noticed that Bath are putting on shows. They've got a 900 seater. They're putting 400 in there. People are coming back. I mean, I'm, you know, I go and sit on the plane and next to people. People are fine about that because they're going on holiday or business or whatever it is. But in theatres, people need to be comfortable about going to sit in theatres. Um, and it, that's increasingly happening. And so, so, so theatres are making an effort to come back. And I'd imagine that you are one of many, many thousand people who would love to be on a race course between now and, now and the end of the season. That. I mean, you know, I think it's so sad. I, I was talking to a jockey for this piece, actually, uh, in the oldie. And, um, and I said to him, what's it like? Uh, well, <laughs> playing, uh, riding to, to, to nobody. And he said, actually, it's all right, you know. He said, because you're coming down the chute and you had a bad, bad race, no one's slugging <laughs> you off. <laughs> yeah, sort of playing, playing to the empty house. Playing to the empty house. Yeah, some exactly. people would absolutely love that, yeah, wouldn't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, there's nobody to really... Not, not having no. to worry about that. So yeah. when does this show in Germany... Oh, that's all, that's all early, early days. Early um, days. So goodness knows, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we're filming the fall uh, in December. Excellent. I gather that a lot of people in the industry have been very um, generous with uh, locations and, um, and facilities and all the rest of it. Um, and so we're doing that. And then, yes, I have a project for, for, for January, which I'm hearing about on Monday, which uh, is, is a theatre thing, which um, I can't talk about just yet. But it's, uh, uh, yeah, the, so things are, are, ch- are turning. Well, Robert, thank you so much for coming in. I'm, and I'm very glad that you were, you were too polite to... <laughs> to, turn, to, to, to turn me down. Uh, Robert Bathus, who's been my uh, special guest today, my thanks to, to Robert. And you can find his article, The Thrill of the Steeplechase, in the last but one edition of The Oldie and the Fall, as Robert was saying, uh, in December. Well, starts filming in December. Yeah. Um,
Right. I uh, hope you are back with us again next week when amongst my guests will be Chris Wright, the founder of the record label Chrysalis and the owner of the brilliant Philly Wonderful Tonight, who added a second Group 1 on British Champions Day last weekend. And then we might be taking a, a little bit of a break, but I'm not sure as yet. Well, under wraps for the time being, my producer's saying... Don't, don't reveal anything for the time <laughs> being. My thanks to Patrick Veach for his company earlier, to Robert and to Lee Mottershead and to you for, for watching as well. Subscribe to Racing TV to be notified when more Luck on Sunday videos are appearing online. And don't forget to join me for the show every Sunday morning from 9 o'clock with the best guests.